So we are continuing our thoughts that this God that we are serving actually visits the earth and visits man and weigh the heart of man and give reward appropriately. When we have this understanding, the Bible tells us that we must always, as Christians, progressively look into our life and observe by experience. Because when God comes and gives you a reward because of your heart, you must bless him. You must worship him. You must continue to align yourself for him. If he comes and gives you warning, it's the same thing. He has saved you. So you bless him and worship him and you align yourself to the instructions that he has given. So therefore, if a man recognizes the visitation of God in his life, you pave a way for greater blessings to flow through your life. If you don't give him the blessings and the worship that he deserves because he has visited you, and you behave anyhow, you see that gates close in front of you, doors close in front of you. You are not able to get the things that you are supposed to get. So a true born again believer who understands the principles of God must always make sure you look into your life and accept the visitation of God progressively and by observation and experience. Because you must stand down and look at yourself and say, wow, this situation, this situation that I'm going through, to be frank, it is God's intervention. And when you see that it is God's intervention who has visited you and give you praise, can help you, you give him praise. Then you see things happening twice more better than before. Job was not born the richest in the East, like West Africa. He started somewhere. He started somewhere and this man believed God and every single day of his life he sacrificed to God for himself, his wife and his children. And sometimes he said, oh, I'm doing this sacrifice so that if maybe my children have met somewhere and they have said something bad against God, God will forgive them. He was aligning himself and giving sacrifice to God every day for his life. And addition came from addition to addition to addition until according to the scripture, he was the richest in all the East, in all the East, like West Africa. All the 19 or 20 countries, when you re remove Job, he was the richest among all. It didn't start from one, one day. God added to it because of that man's adherence, consistent adherence to him. Giving him praise and making sure even he prayed for his children in case they have done wrong against him, God. So Jacob, sorry, no, uh, this man, Job was so much dedicated to God. And if that dedication is granted as each one of us sitting here, and you do the same thing as Job did, and make sure that all your life you remember that God had visited you, and you align yourself to God, God will raise you up from glory to glory. It's a, it's a fact. Job didn't start just, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a rich man in West Africa. He started somewhere from small, 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 small. And his continuous adherence to God lifted him from glory to glory until the world will say that in all the East, this man is the richest and his money came from God. So we read and we saw that if a man is able to do things progressively, and understand God and experience God and give him the praise. At a certain point in time in your life, you can command God to come and visit you. It's a wonderful privilege of a man. If a man do right and every day God sees that this man has respected, this woman has respected my visit and he's aligned himself to me. And at the end of the day, every day he's thinking of me and he is in trouble, you are in trouble. 
even though it is not the day and the time and the year that God must visit you, but because you do this thing, you have the privilege to call upon God, come and visit me. Jeremiah 15 verse 15. We read it last Sunday. Where Jeremiah is now telling God, you know me already. And remember me, understand, this has been my character with you. I've seen your grace, I've seen your power, I live my life by your grace. Therefore now remember me and visit me. You have the mandate. Nobody knows when God is coming to visit our houses. Nobody knows, he comes by his own choices. But now that you have lived your life to please him, you have the capability to ask God, leave the heaven throne and come and visit me in Ashana. Come and visit me in this Tulaku place, God, come and visit me for I am in trouble. We have that privilege. So this position of a man calling God to come and visit him, to avenge him, you know, is the greatest gift God will give to man. For all the prayer comes in the world, I feel of people will trouble. But if I will not go to any prayer camp to pay money to anybody and I will sit in my room because of my life with God and I can call God to visit me and help me, what do I need prayer camp for? I don't need prayer camp for anything. I don't need to pay consultation fee to anybody because I've lived my life and God knows me. Jeremiah said, oh God, you know and understand endlessly. You know him. God knows his principles and his life. It reached a point, Jesus Christ said, Lord, you know me already, but because of this, that's why I'm praying. God knows them. God knows you because of your character, your mind, your behavior. He has visited you once, and from that time onwards, he has seen that you have been persistent and consistent to give him praise and live your life by him. Because of that, you have got the mandate to call him to come and visit you in time of any trouble. It's a greatest privilege that any man will have on earth. Because all of us sitting here, we are answering, we are asking God for answered prayer. And when he comes, he must have, he must help me. And for when you are able to call upon God, your voice on earth in Tulaku can transport in the heaven realm and let God leave his throne and come and visit you. You are a great man. You are a great man. And it is, he does it for people. And this man is saying it, come and visit me and give revenge unto me for my persecutors. I am in trouble. So instead of you living your life by heart and using money to go and pay to, for prayer camp, why don't you live well and stay in the comfort of your chamber and call upon him and he will come. He came for Jeremiah and he will come for you too. You are his son. His life is inside you. So now that we are moving forward for the fourth one, we have to notice from the nature of God is that it is not all the time that he himself descend and visit people with their heart and give them instructions. It's not all the time. Sometimes God send mortal human beings to his fellow mortal human beings to visit the fellow mortal human being and give him the instructions of God. So I say, man, visit man. And that is where the problem is. Because if God himself has not come, and it is man that he has sent to come to his fellow man, sometimes man does not respect the man that God has sent to him, to visit him. He doesn't respect. Because if God has sent brother, has sent me to him, and he doesn't respect me, he look at his life, he look at his status, he look at his money, he look at everything and say, my friend, who are you to come and talk to me? We fail to recognize that in the certain stage of God's mind, he uses human being to visit his fellow human being. That is very important to man, Christianity. Because true pride, true raising of status, true money, men have shunned the voice of God. Because the man standing in front of him is so low, and he is so big, so huge, so big, madam. So who are you, madam, to come and, small madam, to come and tell me, me, madam, what you are supposed to do, whatever. But God uses man to visit man. It's not every time that he descends by himself. He visits person, he visits the earth. 
But sometimes God sits there and says, look, I choose you, this man, to go and visit this man and speak to him on my behalf. But because it's a flesh to flesh, sometimes people don't regard the man. The bride of Christ is not interested in the physique of a person, but is interested in the voice of God. No matter who had the voice of God, don't look at the physique, don't look at the dressing. So long as the person is speaking from God's word and you can see that it is there, it is God who has visited you and given you instructions in life. So the bride of Christ is not necessary to look at physique of man, but listen to the voice of God. And the voice of God can pass through any sister, any brother, any person in the world. For God used them to visit his own people. But because of lack of knowledge, people dismantle and people bring down the fellow man. Because the fellow man is so low and he is so high. It's a dangerous precedent that we must not use in our life. Other than that, we will miss the visitation of God. Nathan was a son of David. When David went to Bathsheba, God came down to Nathan and Nathan entered into the house, the room of his father. And gave a parable. A man had so many this thing, and then one killed another. And then David said, Ha, who is this? Who has done that person? That person must be killed immediately. He said, Father, it is you. Because the Spirit of God was on David, David didn't say that you are my son. How dare you speak to me that that? He immediately fell down, and Psalm 51 came to pass. He didn't look at the boy, Nathan, as a son. Nathan was a real biological son of David. And yet God has called him and he visited his father in the palace and told his father his error. And the moment David heard, heard the voice of God, not the physique of his son, for some time he said, wow, I'm your, I'm your father. How dare you speak to me like that? David didn't make that statement. He heard the voice of God from the man, his son in front of him. And he yielded his life and prayed for God for forgiveness because he heard the voice of God. The bride of Christ with the Holy Spirit in them will hear the voice of God. Come what may, who is standing before you. But many a times, great men, great women in the world, they banished God's voice from, because it's a man. That sister who has not gone to school, how can she speak to me as a voice of God? But God sometimes does not come by himself to visit. He sent people to come and visit you. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, when you read from verse 27, we see this visitation of God through man. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? In other words, all the priesthood must come from the line of Aaron. So Eli is an Aaron, Aaron lineage. Verse 28, the man, this is God sending a man. He said, There came a man to Eli. Visitation. Eli doesn't know him from anywhere. He came and said, God has sent me to you. I am visiting you. And I did choose him out of all the tribe of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an, an effort before me. And did I give unto him the house of thy father, all the offerings made by fire and of children of Israel. God is explaining the genealogy of the offering and the Levite priesthood and how Aaron became the, the people where God was select priest. And he, Eli, is coming from the lineage of, the, of Aaron to perform this. And God said, and I have reserved all the offering that people come and give in the house for you and your household. In verse 29, the visitation, this man who is visiting Eli, representing God, told him that at the end of the day, and I do choose him out of the tribe of Israel to be thy priest. And wherefore, why did you kick against my sacrifices and my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation? 
and honorest thou thy sons above me and make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people the sons of Eli were fooling with the offerings and sacrifices so God sent a man to visit Eli weigh his heart and give him instructions of what to do fellow man to man came but Eli didn't take the information serious because he think from my father Aaron have I become a priest who are you where did you come from right from my father Aaron my house has been dedicated to be a priest I've been a priest my grandfather has been a priest my great great grandfather has been a priest. until Aaron's time in the bush I was a priest what are you talking about my brother so because it is a man's visit Aaron, I mean this man Eli didn't give it a serious thought but even though it was a physical man it was God for it is God who sent that woman or that man to Eli but Eli didn't mind and I'm saying one more time it happens a lot in Christianity it happens a lot in our family it happens a lot in our business when people come and God has given the information to the world and to the, to the people they look at the physique of the man they look at it and they say oh, man, my friend go away you're a demon some of them even call the person call, calls a demon they did it to Jesus Christ God was in Christ visiting the world but they told him that he's a one baba he's an illegitimate child they insulted him they didn't recognize the visitation of God because it was a man but I'm saying that the second point of the point is that God uses man to visit people on his behalf so when you are not very careful and you bullshit man you put man down the woman down you are actually putting God down and you will lose your reward any person who is sent of God to visit man on behalf of God his voice must tally with the Word of God if the person says any other thing he's not sent from God you can throw him away put water on him and push him away but at the end of the day the bride of Christ is trained to listen to the voice of God and man this is the third time I'm saying because it is worrying Christians today she has brought you all the information or whatever you need because you disregarded it for 10 years you are still praying for the same thing when answer came from the man the man that you threw away the answer came long time and you didn't regard it so you are still praying and God has finished the work with you already he's moved somewhere else so many a time many Christians are still praying over years and years and years of trouble that they are going through of answer they are searching for when the answer has already come from a sister a brother a Christian brother or a pastor already God has used that man to visit the woman but then because the woman didn't regard the pastor or the brother or the sister he's still praying to God and God said me my own I finished with you already then for me answer has come but you fail to recognize so there are so many prayer topics which has already been answered and because the way the answer came people disregarded they are still praying for it and you must be very careful Eli did not give respect to the man of God as the visitor of God to him and anytime God sends a man to his daughter or his son and his son or daughter push down the man you are in trouble the next visit is punishment God doesn't send things his children and come and visit the children and give them instructions and then they don't obey and come and give instructions again the next time he comes he comes with trouble so because Eli did not give respect to the man that God has sent to visit him he went to Samuel and told Samuel something first Samuel chapter 3 verse 11 we see now God himself has entered into Samuel's house room he called him some time ago and Samuel didn't know that it was God so he went to Eli but now Eli has told him next time you hear the voice say master speak for thy servant here so now this is God himself right there in the room of Samuel the young man the first time God is now going to use him as a judge for Israel so now God is telling Samuel and the Lord said to Samuel behold I will do a thing in Israel at which both the year of everyone that hear it 
it shall finger. I'm going to bring a punishment. For I don't do things twice. I send something and then people fool around. I'm going to do something serious in Israel and everybody like here will begin to be amazed. In verse 12, we see God continue to tell, I mean, tell Samuel, in that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. Why did he speak to Eli? It was a man. It's a man that he sent to come. But Eli did not respect the man. So now God is telling someone that the man who visited Eli was me. I told him through the man of all the troubles he's going to face. His children and whatever. When you go home, you read from 27 to verse 30. I mean, somewhere, for, somewhere chapter 2. You see that the man was giving the voice of God to Eli. Instructions. And now God himself is telling Samuel that I spoke to Eli concerning this house. And when I, I start, I will end it. But we also know that it was a human being that came to Eli, not God himself. So God is trying to accomplish the, the people that I sent. I sent because of me. They are representing me. You cannot push them down when you think you're doing anything. Whatever that man said, it is I who tell it. And I am telling you somewhere, I am going to do what the man said. God trying to tell us that we have to be careful because sometimes the man that is coming by anointing of God is God himself who is visiting you. In that day, verse 13 please. I have told him that I will judge his house. But we know it was a man who came to you, who came and said, have I, it is your house, it is, you are, you are Aaron descendant and so forth. But now God is telling someone that I, God, have told him through a man. I have told him, I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because of his sons. The man told him of what your sons are doing. So when the man was standing in front of him, it was God visit. Because now God is confirming to someone that it was I who was standing in front of Eli through a man. So brothers and sisters, when we don't understand this level of God's nature, at a certain point in time, as I told you, you lose your blessings, you lose the answer to prayer, because the man speaking to you is, has been sent from God. All the prayer that you have prayed, the answer has come. But the man in front of you, you have dismantled him. You don't want to see him at all. Therefore, you have lost your answers. And then you cannot progress forward. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. That's exactly the word the man said in verse 30. Because of your sons. So God now, the invisible father, who has now appeared to Samuel, is confirming that the man that came to Eli was my servant. And that one, he was representing me. I have returned. But he didn't look at me. The man came, spoke to him, and he let the man go. Call your sons and put your feet down. He didn't regard the man's word. He lifted his sons above God. And I'm saying that sometimes, brothers and sisters, when God is passing in front of you, you will not see him. Because sometimes, according to his nature, he uses human beings. And all the human beings he uses are anointed people where he, God, dwells in them and uses their natural voice, elwell voice, his voice, uh, I mean, whatever voice, to speak to mortal man. But because of man's pride, many of the time, we fail to see God's visit. And it has consequences. In First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20, we are seeing the words of David. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20. Listen to the word of God. And David said to all the assembly, Now adore, praise, and thank the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the king of their fathers, and bowed down and did obeisance to the Lord. And to the king, watch the word, as his earthly representative. It's a powerful word. The man that you see, David, not all kings of Israel are God's representative. David was a special God, special person, anointed by God. Look at the prophecies that God used him to preach concerning Jesus Christ, the cross and the crying and the problem. So the, the man was filled with God. And 
in many times God used David as his representative on earth for Israel. Scripture is saying that the people worship the Lord and magnify the name of the Lord, and also they bow to the king and that time because the king must be greeted. But the greeting was such in the sight of God that they are looking at him and hearing him, his ministration, his songs, his psalms and things. It's making them realize that this man, David, is representing God on earth. So there are some human beings that you don't have to play with. There are some men, some women you don't have to play with. When they visit your house, they visit your car, they call you, they speak to you, they speak for God. But many a times, we neglect it. We neglect it. Here we see David standing in front of the church, and they are praising God and worshiping God, and in the mindset of God, he has placed it upon the heart of the people of Israel to see David as he God's earthly representation because when you see it, you look at the book of Psalms, Psalm 22, Psalm 24 many of the Psalms you see God using David to speak about things that is far away coming even the death of Jesus Christ how Judas betrayed Jesus Christ it's all there from the mouth of David it's written there in the book of Psalms so that man, anointing of God anointing of God was upon him so he became the representative of what? of God and when such a man enters into your house God has entered into your house when such a man enters into your centrist shop God has entered into your shop when God such a man speak to you God is speaking to you so sometimes the God I will pray God 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 when God comes down in a man he has listened to you but because of your filthiness and useless life and because of your pride you don't accept man because a man came when you stand here in Sunday, you can hear the smell. But that is God. That is God on earth. We have to be very, very careful. For all of us sitting here, we are Christ. We are representations of Christ. It's Bible. And if you are representations of Christ, why do we have to molest each other? It's God in front of us, God inside us, reconciling the world. That's what the Bible says. And yet, people look at David and say, oh, fine, fine, that's my answer. But he was God, representations on earth. And God has got such men across the world who are representing him, but people don't care who they are. Remember, I've said that not all kings of Israel are God's representatives. It's only those who are anointed by God. So when you go to 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5, this David that who, who is what? According to scripture, he is an ethnic representative of God. You see, when David was in Bakirim, a man from the family of Saul came, Shimei, son of Jira, came out cursing continuously as he came to David. Um, God, someone who is a God's representative because people don't recognize the physique of David they started cursing him maltreating him but he was a God on earth God's representative on earth and when you think you do that to God's representative will you go for scot free? you won't go scot free they started, he started cursing David so verse 6 he went on and after cursing you go to the scripture he was stoning David you won't have it easy. David is a representative of God. And this man stoned David. Sometimes mankind don't know their visitation. This man that you are treating him so, this woman you are treating him so, he's God's representative and nature of God. God sends him, God sends her. And yet you are maltreating him. Look at David. He was being stoned by a mortal man, Shimel. And the people around him were left and right. And David was standing there and receiving the stones just like that. The last one, verse 7, and we'll close. 
Shimei said as he cursed, get out, get out, you man of blood and you base fellow. No, base fellow in the world is a way of boy. Base. When a man says you are a base fellow, he says, when you are a boy, 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 you People must be very, very, very careful in Christianity today. Because the man doesn't look like you, doesn't speak to you like you, but he's bringing the word of God to the world or to you, you are insulting him and destroying him because by, well, you don't know that he's a representative. God uses man to represent himself on earth. And so when that man enters into your house, I've told you, it is just like God has come. When that man is standing in front of you and talking to you, it's just like God has been talking to you because he is a representative. And many Christian cycles in the world, they have missed it. But you, brother, sister, listen to the voice of God and be careful so that when God visits you through man, you will see the visit and align yourself so that blessings Will follow your life. God bless. Shall we bow down our heads? Father, we bless you. One more time, you are elevating us forward to understand your nature. We have realized that sometimes, Father, you use man to represent yourself. As we are sitting here and learning from you, give us a heart that will subject ourselves to one another, that we will not use words to disturb and molest each other. Because every one of us at any time become your representation. We bless you, O oh God, as you let this church grow in knowledge and that they will use that knowledge to govern their life so that blessings will follow them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen.